morning, church. Come on, let's stand together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Every voice. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. Come on. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Sing it out. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Come on. We shout out your praise. Because we were the beggars, and now we're royalty. And we were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord see. Come on, sing it again. Because we were the beggars. Sing it out. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. And we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing. Come on, just our voices. Come on. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Come on. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't Come be on, quiet. sing it again. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Yeah, we shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Come on, let's give a shout this morning. Yeah. Well, good morning, church family. We do have some joy in the house of the Lord this morning, right? Well, we have a birthday that was on Friday, so Sister Twyla will come up here. We've got a little something for her. We got you some flowers and a gift card, and this is from your church family, and we want to say happy birthday and that we love and appreciate you so much, and we are so thankful. And if you don't know, it's this lady's birthday today, so happy birthday. We're birthday buddies. <laughs> Amen. Welcome somebody to the house of the Lord real quick. Let them know that they're looking good. Amen. 
Amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, and then you can be seated for a moment. Um, we're trying uh, this year, because Pastor Twyla normally just likes like the birthday, like the one day, like, you know, she doesn't like a lot of attention. So we're trying a birthday week this year, and I don't know how she's doing with it. She's, you know, she, it's, it's out of her comfort zone. I'll just say that, because it started on Thursday with our grandkids, and then yesterday, and then Saturday, <laughs> so today, and then she has something tomorrow with her work friends, because if you don't know, she teaches uh, silver sneakers at uh, the rec center, and so if you're a, a senior and you want to get physically active, see, see Pastor Twyla, they got 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock classes, you can do that Monday through Friday, just a shameless plug for my wife there. Um, but anyway, if that's if that's you and you uh, have need of that, you know, uh, check in. So this is the time of the year that uh, Twyla is just three years younger than me. Other time of the year, she's four years younger. So uh, she kind of likes it. She says, "Stop saying I'm four years older than you. I mean, you're, I'm, you're four years older than me." I said, "But you are." So now she's like, "See, it's like not." Today is a great day, and I'm going to finish the, uh, the message that I've been working on about Forward, and I initially called it Forward Sunday, and now it's turned into Forward Sundays, uh, plural, and so I'm looking forward to getting into that word and us kind of walking the rest of the way through this as God uh, prepares us for the rest of 2024, and as part of that, we do an annual state of the church kind of thing and where we talk about where we've been and where we're going and give a financial report. And so I'd really like as many of you to come that can be here next Sunday night at five o'clock. Yes, there will be a financial report. So there are business things that take place, but also we want to talk about the vision of the church and this word forward that we feel God has given us as a theme as we move forward. And you can put you know, like, if you haven't done anything for your for your spouse for Valentine's, then I would say move forward into that. Amen. Uh, move forward in love, right? You know, get time to get going. It's Wednesday. Men, it's Wednesday. This, we this Wednesday is uh, Valentine's Day. Um, so just, just helping you out there. Just here to help. So, but if you can come on the 18th, of course, be here Sunday morning. We got Sunday morning service. But if you can come... Uh, Sunday evening I just believe that God wants to speak to us and say something to us collectively to carry us forward uh, into this year into the good things that God has planned for us amen amen can you believe we're only like a month out or so from Easter and all of that happening it's just it just where has time gone right but God is good He's good all the, all the time. Amen. If you would uh, prepare your hearts to give, I'm going to go ahead and ask the ushers to make their way down. We want to bless this offering together and collectively today. And so if you are an online giver, you just join me in this, in this prayer. Amen. Father, I thank you for everything that's given today in the offering bags as well as online. I thank you for every giver and all their life and all that their life represents and what their faithfulness represents. I pray that you bless them and that you give them a reward with the children's pastor and the youth pastor and that you give them the reward with the missionary that they are financially supporting and that you give them the reward of every soul that is saved that allows this building to be open on Sundays and Wednesdays for the gospel to be communicated from this pulpit and for the reach it has around the world. I pray you bless them with that reward today in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Let's give with willing hearts. Church, let's stand again. Let's worship together. Forget all your the cares and your worries of the day. Let's just give it to the Lord and let's worship together.
praying God come and turn this thing around God turn it around God turn it around God turn it around I'm calling on the name that changes everything yes God turn it around God turn it around, God turn it around, cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus, breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus, come on. Turn it around, and God turn it around, God turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. Oh, God turn it around, and God turn it around. Come on, God turn it around, cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, come on, the name of Jesus. Sing it again. Cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. So God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. He is up to something, He is up to something, God is doing something right now. Come on, He is up to, yes, He is, He is up to something, God is doing, sing it with me right now. Is healing someone, he is saving someone. God is do come on right now. He is healing someone, he is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for some. Come on, God is doing something. Sing it out right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for some. Come on, lift your voice. Right now, he is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something. Right now, he is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something. Cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come. Come in the name, the name of G. Come on, sing it again. Cause all of my hope is in the name, yes, it is. the name of Jesus. So breakthrough will come. Come in the name, the name of Jesus. So God, turn it up. God, turn it up. Every situation, God, turn it up. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around, so God turn it around, God turn it around, yeah. God turn it around, you can turn it around right now, so God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around, come on let's give him another praise offering this morning for turning it around. We thank you, Lord Jesus. It is done in Jesus' name.
encourage you, church, to worship with everything you have this morning. Don't look around. Set your eyes and focus on him. It's in these moments when we worship, when we sing his praises, that he moves. He moves these mountains. He makes a way. So press in this morning, church. Press in. Let's worship with your whole heart. Jesus is in this room, here right now, here right now, making this place I stand, holy ground, holy ground. Your spirit.
have passed away your love has stayed the same your constant grace remains the cornerstone things that we thought were dead are breathing your son to shine on darkest nights for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song Jesus we love you oh how we love 
more time. A heart's the door. Jesus, we love you, yes. Oh, how we love you. Cause you are the word A heart's the door. Just sing it to him. While we're all still standing, do you love him? I said, do you love him? Amen. Maybe you're sitting, standing, I should say now, standing there. Maybe you don't know how to love him. Maybe you've never been asked, do you love him? Maybe you've never been brought up in church or around God or the things of God. Maybe you're not used to these kinds of things. Let me just say, open your heart to the love of God. The Bible tells us that we didn't love him first, he loved us first. And the Bible tells us because of that love, he sought out a relationship with us. And he did that through his son Jesus. And his son Jesus paid the ultimate price to have that relationship with us. While we were yet sinners, when we did not even know God's love, God was loving us through Jesus and giving us Jesus. So while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. For you. To have a relationship with you. And he wants to have one today, so I just want you to open your heart to that relationship. Maybe you were brought up in church. Maybe you were reared in church. Maybe you prayed a sinner's prayer at youth camp or were baptized at uh, an early age. Or maybe you went to Sunday school. Or maybe, you know, once you became an adult, you got out of church and you did your own thing. And now you've got questions or now you're dealing with things and you need answers. He has those answers for you. He has them for you today. And he wants to meet you with those answers. Amen? He wants to meet you with those answers. I was brought up in church. I, I jokingly say, and I don't mean this that it's a joke, but I jokingly say I got saved every time evangelist that came through, right? Um, I didn't want to go to hell, but I didn't know how to live for heaven. I know my Sunday school teachers and my my pastor, they're not the reason I didn't live it. They, they, they did their part. I just couldn't seem to figure it out. I just couldn't seem to accept it. Like I would do good for a while and then I would backslide or, you know, whatever you want to say. But at 21, I walked into a church, having been reared in church, having been raised in church, and I needed answers, solid answers, not just surface answers. And God stepped into my life. I was just sharing this this weekend with someone. I was just talking to someone Saturday about this is when it became real for me. And Jesus stepped into my chaos and my mess and he first calmed me, and then he began to calm the storm around me. He wants to do that for you today. And I want you just to keep your heart open in this message, okay? Just keep your heart open. Since I kept you standing, we'll go ahead and stand for the word. 
and then we'll pray. We're going to pray. When we pray, we're going to pray for everyone that's sick, that isn't here today, everyone that's sick, that's watching online. God's going to heal people today. It is the Lord who directs your life, for each step you take is ordained by God. Right? For what? To bring you closer to your destiny. So much of your life then remains a mystery. And then our passage out of Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. I'm just going to read the first few lines of 19. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Father, we just ask for you to minister healing to every person who's sick. There are those that are at home at home today who are chronically sick and they need the deliverance that can only come through the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to stand in this pulpit and just preach Christ to be the healer and not believe you to heal. I'm not going to stand in this pulpit and preach that the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus brings healing and not believe that it does. So I believe you're touching everyone in their home. I believe your Holy Spirit is moving on the online. I believe your Holy Spirit is moving even where people aren't watching us today and they're sensing your touch and they're sensing your presence and they may not know it's because we're praying, but I'm believing for their healing. I'm believing for salvation. I'm believing for deliverance from demonic forces and powers. I'm believing that the name of Jesus is going to be large in this place today and in lives are going to testify at the end of this service or by the end of this day that Jesus did it when no other thing could do it. And I ask those things in your name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. I want to ask you to go back to that Proverbs 2024 for a moment. I'm just going to step my way through a couple of things and then we're going to move into the new part of this message. This verse says that the Lord directs your life. Before you know the Lord, He's directing your life to Him. After you know the Lord and as you surrender your life to Him, He's directing your life. But if you have an intersection with the Lord and, and you ask Jesus to come in here and you don't, you don't serve Him and you don't follow your destiny that He has for you, guess what's going to happen? He's going to keep intersecting your life. He's going to keep intersecting your life because, listen, you've never gone too far that you can't turn around. You've never gone too far that God can't take you and say, I'm going to turn you here, I'm going to turn you here, I'm going to turn you there, and then all of a sudden you're right where you were supposed to be. God does that because we have destinies, we have futures, we have hopes. Listen, our history can tell us where we've been, but our history cannot tell us where we're going. It's just a reference point. It's just a point of reference that I was there. I was there. But now I'm not there. And then he says this, that, that the reason that God is ordaining each of your steps is to bring you into that destiny. And yet so much of our life remains a mystery. Because your destiny is a mystery, that's why you need to journey with him. That's why you need to journey with with the body of Christ. That's why you need to journey with a fellowship, with a group of believers. Listen, there's no church that's made up of one person. There's no kingdom that's made up of one person. The body of Christ is the body of Christ. It's members in particular. It's not a, a individual member. And so we need God. We need to journey with God and we need to journey with others who are on the same journey we're on. And I spent a lot of time talking about unity and talking about what that looks like. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention that as we kind of move through. But I want you to just kind of work with me for a moment. In the next verse, when God says, don't remember 
right? I've, I keep telling you this, but I want you to get it. Don't remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. All he's saying is don't let it influence you. Not that it wasn't important. Listen, I've got Ebenezer stones, which was a, a stone of memorial in the Old Testament. When God won Israel this mighty victory, they set up this stone so they could remember. Listen, I've got monuments all over my past. I've got memorials. I've got altars, places I've traveled, places I've gone. They're meaningful to me. Sometimes I go back in my mind and I visit those places. When I'm back home in Fremont, Ohio, I go by my church where I got saved. I do all of those things, but I don't let all of those things influence where God is taking me. Right? That's what it's saying. He's saying, I'm doing something brand new. Listen, God is doing something brand new in the earth. He's doing something brand new with his people. He wants you to see it. He wants you to understand it. He wants you to comprehend it to the sense of obedience. You may not understand all of the details, but you know enough that this is God and I'm following it. I want God is saying, I want you to walk in my will. Right? So jump in with us. North Elliott Church of God, we are moving forward into the future led by a promise. Every one of us has personal promises. But we have a corporate promise. We're being led into our future by a promise. Where God is leading us, I've told you this every week, where God is leading us does not require a map. Moving forward requires first discomfort with current surroundings. you got to become uncomfortable with your current surroundings. Secondly, You've got to expand your horizons. Thirdly, moving forward requires turning and going northward. Number four, moving forward requires listening for instruction and guidance. Number five, moving forward requires keeping pace with God. Right? Number six, moving forward requires prioritizing unity. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren or, or for the body of Christ to dwell together in unity. There's an anointing on us when we come together that is not present when you're alone. I'm not saying you aren't anointed. I'm not saying that the Spirit doesn't move on you. But I'm saying when we come together, all of the sudden, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, these manifestational moves, these things are now present to speak and to guide and direct. Healing is present. Miracles are present. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, messages in tongues, interpretation of those messages in tongues, prophecies, faith, all of these things are available when we come together because there's this corporate anointing. Number seven, moving forward requires staying alert. And I talked much about prayer and intercession last week. But let's get into today. Moving forward requires keeping the faith. If we're going to move forward into the future God has for us, then we need to keep the faith. And I've already been talking about this, and I'll press the button just one more time, and then I'll move on. If you don't have a faith, you got to start a faith, <laughs> right? You've got to, first, you've got to begin the journey of faith. You've got to invite Jesus Christ in. You've got to invite him in as Lord and Savior. You've got to invite him in as teacher and guide. You've got to invite him in. You can't get there without God. You can't do it without God. So you got to start the faith before you can keep the faith. But we're talking about keeping the faith. And last week I, 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 I talked about this idea of unity. So, so listen to, to what happens. These next two points are very important. They're both out of Hebrews. One's going to be out of Hebrews 11. The other's going to be out of Hebrews 12. In verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell. So the Hebrew writer has been telling all of these great stories of faith. All of these wonderful things that have happened throughout the ages because people had faith. 
and he says, I'm running out of time. I don't have time to tell you about Gideon or Barak or Samson or Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets. Verse 33, listen to this. Who through faith, who through faith. Now, there are ten things listed. When we talk about keeping the faith, we're talking about doing this journey, walking into our destiny, following the cloud, following the glory, following the presence of God, following the leading of the Spirit, whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, keeping the faith, who through faith, number one, listen to this, subdued kingdoms, number two, worked righteousness, Number three, obtained promises. He said, I don't have time to tell you of all the people who have subdued kingdoms, who have worked righteousness, and who have obtained promises. But he doesn't stop there. Number four, they stopped the mouths of lions. Number five, they quenched the violence of fire. Number six, they escaped the edge of the sword. Number seven, out of weakness they were made strong. Eight, they became valiant in battle. Number nine, they turned the flight of armies of aliens when armies came against them. If one can turn a thousand, right? And two can turn ten thousand. Right? Then three can turn a hundred thousand. And four a million, right? God can turn it. God can turn it. These ten things, they all they did these things through faith. They did these things through faith. So I ask you, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord? I forgot one, didn't I? Ten. Women had their dead raised back to life again. People have been raised back to life again. Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord? Or are you going to re- believe the report of the enemy that says you can't? The enemy always tries To sabotage your identity in Christ by saying you ain't all of that in a bag of chips. Right? I know who your family is. I know where you came from. Or the big one. Your church may not know what you did, but I know what you did. Right? They used to sing that song. I don't think it's very theological, but... He got the point, right? God's going to get you for that. God's going to get you for that. He saw what you did, and he knows where you're at. God's going to get you for that. And I mean, that was like, whew, that scare you. Now you know why I got saved in every revival. I mean, as much as you can get in front of you before you meet him, you need to do it. You know, I mean, as much as that sin, just get it, get it in front, get it confessed. But if that's your image of God, one camp meeting, I was, a, I was a preacher, one camp meeting back in the early 90s, I heard a pastor say something at camp meeting that changed my life and caused me to quit singing that song. He said, God is not hiding behind a tree, watching your life, ready to jump out and say, ah! Got you. Right? Caught you in it. That's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. He tempts you to sin, and when you sin, he says, ah! Right? Immediately. Immediately he jumps on you with shame and guilt and condemnation. But the Bible says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Listen, you may stumble into the flesh. You may make a mistake every once in a while. But get up, dust yourself off, and keep your faith. You only lose when you give up your report. You only you lose when you quit. When you stop, that's when the devil wins. But if you get up and say, yep, I did it. I messed up. God, I'm sorry, but help me move forward. I think if I was a teenager and somebody would have helped me, would have come alongside and said, listen, Ken, just keep going. The years between 15 and 21 wouldn't have been so rough. Just keep pushing through. Our church had a tremendous revival. We had a three-week revival. Every kid in the youth group got saved. We had 30, 40 kids get saved in our youth group. And there's probably only a handful of us still serving God. And a couple of us are preachers. But I didn't know what to do when I went back to school and my friends were saying, you're acting different. Well, I didn't want to act. I didn't want to be. I mean, then you're like, no, I'm the same guy. And what do you do? You turn into Peter. A cussing fisherman. Oh, I don't know him. (laughs) Right? But if you keep going, listen to the words of what Jesus told Peter. Satan has desired you. He's desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Not only is he ever living to make intercession for you, but he is able to save those who come to God through him. If you keep the faith, you will win. You will walk into your destiny. You will walk into your purpose. You will fulfill your promise. Don't give it up. And if if Satan has tricked you out of it, then you take Um, I wish I could call the address. I don't have it right now. But Proverbs says if a thief be caught, he has to repay seven times. Right? You tell him, you owe me. You owe me those years I lost. And I'm going to trust in God because the Bible says he redeems the time. And God's going to redeem those years. And I truly believe those six years that I lost as a teenager, God redeemed. I truly believe that I'm standing where I'm supposed to be standing in the destiny I'm supposed to be because I haven't quit. I haven't given up. Right? I heard Tommy Barnett Say the secret to a successful pastorate is every Monday, go buy Starbucks, pick up a vanilla latte, go to your office, write your resignation letter. If when you're done with the vanilla latte, you still want to quit, go get another vanilla latte. (laughs) Right? And the same thing is, the same thing is true. I also heard him say this about marriage. Tommy Barnett said this about marriage. He said of him and his wife, neither one of them quit on the same day. If you both quit on the same day, you're in trouble. You're heading to divorce court. You're, you're getting attorneys. You're, you know, the army's coming out. The guns are ready to fire. But if you refuse to quit on the same day, guess what? You'll have a long marriage. You'll make it. Thanks for allowing me to have a little humor with this. Number nine, moving forward requires laying aside every weight. Now, there's more than than just the weight, but I didn't want to have three lines. So we're going to say, and and the sin, which so easily ensnares. Let me break this verse down. So we've gone from from this record of the faithful. In Hebrews 11, and now listen to what verse 1 says. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin, not a sin, not sins, but the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, there's more I could say about that, but that, that would get into another part of the message. So listen to me. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who heard the past promises of new things. Abraham, Genesis 12. Get you out, right? I talked about this last week. Get you out of your country, out of your father's household, into a land that I will show you. I will give it to you, and I'll make you a great nation. What about Peter? Who do people say that I am? Well, some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist, resurrected. Some say you're one of the prophets. But whom do you say that I am? And, and Simon says, blessed, right? He, says, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Interesting, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed who I am to you, but my Father in heaven, you are Peter. Changed his name. He changed his name. And you can find record all through the Bible where significant spiritual moments hit where God changed people's names. And they are that great cloud of witnesses. And they are saying to us, it's worth it. Oh, i got to come down here. I feel like preaching. I should wear a suit more often, John. Listen to me. I stay where the camera can see me. You're seeing me, right? Okay. They're saying, it's worth it. It's worth saying no to some things. This journey with Christ is worth saying no to worldly pleasures. This journey with Christ is worth letting go of your opinions. It's, 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 it's this journey. It's lay down the weight. Lay it aside. I've got all this in the Greek and I've got it on my notes, but listen to me. This word weight means bulk. When you go through life, Satan and people will hang things on you like a coat rack. Right? That old saying, you know, I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say to me, bounce off me and sticks on you. Right? Like you got Velcro or something or static. Somebody says you're fat. Somebody says you're ugly. Right? Who remembers the first message I preached before I was your pastor? No more labels. No more labels. Satan will try to label you. You're a failure. You won't serve God. I know every time the temperature gets turned up, you'll quit. What you got to do is you got to lay down the weight. You got to lay it aside. You got to put it somewhere and forget the address. Right? I mean, don't write a pirate map. I'll go back and get that later. 12 steps this way, two steps this way. You know what I mean? Don't don't do that. Lay down the weight. Lay down the heaviness of it. It's a burden. It's an impediment. And it hinders one from doing something. Right? So, I used to work out with this guy that was super, 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 I mean like, he was like my height, but he was like this thick. Like, I mean, if you turn sideways, he's like this thick. Like, he'd be like 385, just doing this with it. He said, Pastor, I'm going to max out today. And I'm like, 385? I mean, he got me up to 285. That's as, that's as high as I ever got benching. Got me up to 285. And, 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 uh, and he would come in some days and he'd say, we're doing dips today. And then he breaks out the 20-pound vest that he straps on you, and then you got to do the dip with 20 extra pounds on you. And he's like, Pastor, are you struggling? Let me take out. He's got the you know, one-pound pouches. He'll take out a couple of them. Right? But after he did that to me for about a week, we come in, and he's like, no vest today. How many dips can you do? Man, 
when that weight was gone, right? Lay it down. Lay it down. And the sin. The word sin literally translates to the word offense. And we're not talking about the Super Bowl, that kind of offense. There will be offense tonight. I just don't know who will have it and who won't. I'm talking about being offended. In this particular passage, the sin that does so easily beset or ensnare is the sin of offense. As you move through this passage, Hebrews 12, 15 will say, Don't let a root of bitterness spring up and cause you trouble. For by it, the root of bitterness, many will be defiled. When an offended person meets somebody that's not offended, they try to offend them. They try to get that person to wear offense. Refuse it. Lay it down. Give it up. Walk away from it. Leave it alone. Scott Shepard recently said this. He's a pastor in Athens, Georgia. And he said, you can't take your old bitterness into your new promise. Lay it down. Get rid of that bitterness. Leave it alone. And do what the last instruction was. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. He's the one writing your story. That's what Psalm 139 is all about. All the days of your life I have written in a book. The author and finisher of your faith. He's the beginning and end. Yes, he's the Alpha and Omega. But he's the one that is writing your story. And not only is he writing your today. He has already written your future. He has written your finish. He knows that you can finish strong. He knows that you can overcome. He knows that you can go all the way. He knows something. Something about you that you don't know about yourself. Listen, I've only done one 5K, so I'm no expert on this. But I talked to a couple guys in the church, Kyle and Joel. And I got great advice. Kyle said, expect pain. And it was painful. (laughs) And Joel just talked to me about... Working on my time. You know, what is the best ever? What's it called again? The, the, when you run, do your best, your best run. PR, right? Personal record, right? Did I get it right? PR. He said, I PR'd. I was like, what? What'd you do? <laughs> well, now I know what it is. It's great. That's great. Somebody said, PR, yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> so, my goal. In, the, in, the, in, this, in this race was the first mile, I wanted to run it in, in 11 minutes. And so I did that, right? And the other goal was I wanted to finish <laughs> in under 40 minutes total, right? And I did that. So God helped me, right? But I couldn't have, I couldn't have done that if I would have listened to my mind. Because my mind was telling me things that wasn't true. When I started looking at something different, that's what Jesus is saying. Listen, when it gets tough, look at me. When the devil's telling you you can't, look at me. When the devil's saying it's over, look at me. When the devil is telling you, you you're finished, you're through, this, this, they're going to write your epitaph, this is what they're going to say about you, this is, it's over, Right? Look at me. Look at me. I have put my spirit in you and I am speaking to you. Now this isn't the end, so Pastor Ruben, you can stay. I'll, I'll let you know when you can move. But this is, the, this is the tenth point. Finally moving forward requires stewarding the gifts. God has given us all gifts. Every person in this room. He has gifted you in some way or fashion. He has given you gifts. 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, It is required of stewards that we be found faithful. 
And then in Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, it says, For the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. The old King James says they're without repentance. Meaning God is never going to change his mind about what he's given you. He's never going to change his mind. Some of you may have the gift to write. And you may make a living by that to where you make, a, you make an income that you can serve in the church for free. It, it's your vocation. Some of you may write for the church. You may write curriculum. You may write books. You may, you may write sermons. You may write for the church. You may write songs, right? Musical talent, whatever God has given you. Some of you have, have, have the gift of, you know, you're just even keeled. <laughs> and the church needs some even keeled people. I told Twyla, I come from a long line of fussers. Right? As far as I know, fussing was in my mom's family. My grandma fussed the whole time she cleaned the house. My mom fussed the whole time she cleaned the house. And I, if I ain't under the blood that day, I'm fussing when I'm doing it, right? I'm doing the dishes, but I'm under my breath. I ain't happy about it, right? I want to cook and make the mess and somebody else do the dishes, Right? So I don't know how Twyla can cook and keep everything clean at the same time. It doesn't happen for me. She comes out and she says, why is there grease all over the stove top? Do you not cook eggs with grease? How do you cook your eggs? Right? I mean, my mom had so much grease in there, she'd tip the pan and flip the grease up and get the top of the egg white before she ever had to flip it, you know. So just a long line of fussers. So, so I told Twy, I said, I said, listen, I figured this out. Just let me fuss a little bit, and I'll work through it, and I'll be good. Right? I'll catch myself. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will say, don't say, somebody, you know what I mean? So, so you know, there's some people, they're hot, they're cold. There's some people, you know, you just, you're just even keeled. You're just kind of like, hey, listen, I'm good. Let's all just keep going. We need even keel people. We need, we need people like that. So listen, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to speak individually a little bit, but I'm going to speak more corporately. So as we move forward, church, as we move forward into this promise of a new thing and into the fulfillment of God's purposes for us collectively, let us not forget then to steward our individual gifts for the good of the body. Does that make sense? To steward my gift. Listen, if I wasn't put on earth for anything else, I was put on earth to preach. I know that. I know that. I know God called me to preach. I know it. But I have other gifts. I've got to steward them. Some of them are, are stronger in my life and some are weaker. But God is going to require that I give an account for what I did with them. Right? How did I steward the gifts? How did I steward the time he gave me? How did I steward these talents, these abilities? How did I steward the money, the finances? You know, some people say time, talent, treasure, you know, so they can keep all the T's. So how did I steward that? Was I a good steward of it for the good of the body? Was I faithful in the tithe considering the body, not just what my family needed? Ever since I heard Kevin Wallace say, that when you give the tenth, you don't live on the 90, you live on God. Because I used to say you live on the 90%. God will bless the 90 and it'll be, right? It changed my thinking. I'm not living on the 90, I'm living on God. When I give God the tenth, I'm living on his promises. I'm living on his purpose. So when I'm faithful, God blesses me. You know, it, things may be simple Sometimes as simple as your tires last longer, your washing machine don't break, <laughs> right? Think Appliances make it, you know. Things happen. Good things happen. But don't just think I'm only talking about finances. When you faithfully discharge the gifts and callings that he has given you, he's entrusted you with. Maybe you're an intercessor. Maybe you're a servant. 
Maybe you're a giver. Maybe you're a volunteer. Maybe you're a caregiver. Maybe you're someone who just loves people. Just be a good steward of it. Whatever it is, whatever he's given you, he's not going to change his mind about it. All right, Pastor Reuben, you can come. Moving forward is not a one-time decision. You're going to make this decision time and time again throughout your life. So no matter the circumstances, let's move into our closing. I'm going to ask everybody to stand. No matter the circumstances, just keep moving forward into God's promised future by faith. Why? Because our destiny awaits. Our destiny awaits. Last week I gave you this verse. I want to give it to you again. Daniel 11.32, the B portion. That means the second portion of the verse. The people who know their God shall be strong. They shall be strong. And they shall carry out great exploits. Pastor Jim Rayleigh says it like this. When God's people follow their destiny, they become destiny on display. Destiny on display. Let's be destiny on display. North Elliott Church of God, I'm calling you to be destiny on display. I'm not calling you to be perfect. I'm not calling you to have it all figured out and all worked out. I'm just saying let's be God's destiny on display for a watching world. For those who want to know what it looks like to follow God, I don't always do it right. But when I don't do it right, I make it right. I'm not always up, but when I'm down, I'm not down long. Whenever He knocks me out, I get back up. Because I've got the Holy Spirit living inside of me. I'm going forward into what God has for me. I want the church to go forward into what God has for us. And I want us all to arrive in that place. Let's be destiny on display. Because Israel, as they marched through, God said, any foreigner or any stranger that wants to join in with you, bring them in. God wants to add to our church daily those who are being saved. God wants to bring others in. As we are destinedly on display, God's going to bring in lost and hurting people. God's going to bring in those that are looking for answers, people who are looking for truth, because we decided to be destiny on display. Let's be that right now. Everybody praying in your own way as I pray over you. Father, I declare... That North Elliott Church of God is destiny on display. It may be a mystery where you're taking us. May be a mystery. But it's not a mystery to you. What you're going to do, who you're going to bring, the lost that are going to be saved, the missionaries that are going to be sent, the songs that are going to be written, the futures that are going to be lived are going to be obtained by faith and through faith. I pray over every person, every family member, everyone that's here, that they make this same declaration to be destiny on display. I pray it over them. I pray it over them in Jesus' name. I want us to worship just a little bit. And then we'll close. We've got time. Let's just worship a little bit around the throne. Let's thank Him. Let's praise Him. Here I stand before you now As honestly as I know how Broken by the days gone by Spirit, help my soul to rise. I try my best, but still I fail. Remind me 
am a child of God, regardless of the things I've done. Oh, my hope is found in perfect love. Cause your mercy, it triumphs over joy. God just spoke into my spirit and said there are people in here, not person, people. You can't get over your past failure. You cannot get over your past failure. The last thing that you failed at has hung you right there. And this song says his mercy triumphs over his judgment. God's not looking to judge you. He's looking to free you. He's looking to set you free. And I don't care if you use a, a giving envelope for this, but I want you to, to write, I am not my past failure. Write it, on, write it on a piece of paper somewhere. I am not my past failure. And I'm telling you, be brave if you're the first person. Be brave. Others will come. Be brave. Others are going to come. They're going to bring it. I want you to lay it at the altar. I don't want you to write what it is. I don't want anybody to worry about somebody read what I put down. Just say, just, just write that down. I am, I am not my past failure. If you want to just write mercy, you write mercy. Whatever you need to write, you write something like that. And you bring it and you lay it on this altar. And you let the Lord catapult you over. You're not your past failure. You're not, you're not the past thing you did that you stalled at. And we're going to sing this song and we're going to rejoice because people's lives are being changed. And right now, as you do this, you are becoming destiny on display for someone. Someone is going to see it and someone is going to respond. We're going to sing for a little bit. We're going to do this so people have time. Right? So, Father, right now, begin to do. Go, go, go. How do you say that it's impossible? To ever save a sinner's soul But my God says to the prodigal My beloved one, you're welcome home Home Cause your mercy It triumphs over joy
his presence day. Sing it with us. All to Jesus I surrender. Oh, and all to Jesus I surrender. Yes, we do, Lord. And all to him I freely yeah. And I will ever love and trust. voice that sing your mercy triumphs cause your mercy does it triumphs it triumphs over judgment love wider than love wider than horizon it's stronger than all This little exercise, it's not limited to here. It's not limited to today. If later on you're like, man, I wish I had done that. I wish I had wrote that down and came forward. Just do it wherever you are. I'm not my past mistakes. It's not my identity. That's not who I am. His mercies triumphed over any judgment. Lord, here I am. Just me. Forgive me. Heal me. Whatever you need to do, use me. I'm looking to you. You're the author of my faith. You're the author of my journey. You're the author of my story. You can do this anytime. Just know. Just know. Even people online, you're free. There is no condemnation. It's not coming up because you questioned it. It's coming up because Satan wants you to question it. Jesus wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. It's the thief who's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't live in darkness. Just write it on paper and move forward. Just write it down and then move forward. Amen? Amen. Let me pray over you. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you for this word. Thank you for your presence in this place. Go with us now. Lead and guide us over the next few weeks and months into the new thing. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love on one another. Talk to one another. Bless one another. And as always, get your children that can't go home with me. <laughs>